So what is that great insight that we're being given by the central limit theorem? So let's start with this case where we have a random variable x and we know it's normally distributed and it has these parameters, expected value of mu and variance of sigma squared. And let's draw n independent draws from that random variable and calculate x bar the sample mean. We know that is also a random variable and previously we figured out that the expected value of this random variable is also mu, the same expected values our individual draws and the variance is sigma squared over n. So it's related to this variance but it gets smaller and smaller with the sample size. However, we didn't say anything about the distribution of this random variable x bar. We just characterized the expected value. So that was the expected value of x bar and the variance of x bar. However, if we are drawing from a normal distribution, x bar is of course just a linear combination of normally distributed random variables. Remember that's the same as 1 over n x1 plus 1 over n x2 all the way to 1 over n xn. If these x1, x2 and xn up to xn are all normally distributed random variables, then we know as linear combinations of normally distributed random variables are also normal that that x bar has to be a normal distribution. So we can derive that with all the knowledge we already have. We don't need any other fancy theorem for that. What, however, if we draw from a non-normal distribution and therefore we don't know what the distribution of the x is? We still characterize now this new random variable x coming from a non-normal distribution with its expected value is equal to mu and that is the, sorry, the variance of x is sigma squared. So that stays the same. All we change is that we don't know which distribution it comes from. We are still drawing n independent draws from this and we are still interested in the sample mean of this sample. So what we derived before is we still understand that x bar is a random variable and we still know that its expected value and variances are mu and sigma squared over n respectively. That is still valid because when we derived the expected value of x bar and the variance of x bar, we did not have to make this assumption that derivation was independent of that assumption. So how do we know now what this distribution is? And this is, this information is given to you by the central limit theorem and it tells you that that distribution of x bar is actually a normal distribution regardless of this distribution. So that could be any crazy distribution. So regardless of that distribution, the distribution of x bar is normal for large enough n. For large enough n, so sample sizes. Okay, for large enough n, this is normally distributed. And this is an incredibly powerful result and perhaps a somewhat surprising result. How should it be that whatever distribution x is, the sample mean is still normally distributed? It's an incredibly powerful result, which is used a lot in statistics and econometrics.